Good morning. Hi there. Who do we have with us this morning? Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Miss Jennifer, Miss Linda. We are, it is 530. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and mute you guys and we're going to get started. Thank you for joining us. All participants are muted and they can unmute themselves. To start the recording and start. All right. So, welcome to everybody on the prayer line, uh, our call, our conference call, and welcome to all of you on Facebook. We are going to be coming from the Gospel of John. We're going to study this morning from the Gospel of John. So, as you gather yourself, your things, your Bible, your coffee, your <clears throat> pencil, or pen, or pad, Please share and call and wake your friends up for Bible study and a prayer moment with, with Just For My Soul Ministries. The Gospel of John. <clears throat> and we're going to go from verse 1 to verse 5. So a few brief short announcements um, before we get started this morning. I want to encourage you all to please join us this Saturday for our regular Saturday morning session. It starts at 9.30 a.m. It'll be face, Facebook Live. It'll also be recorded and placed on our website. Any of our educational prayer uh, moments, the book study, all of those things are now up on the website at justformysoul.org justformysoul.org is our website. So go there to listen to past prayers, um, to see the introduction to the Bible study, the book that we're reading, Fervent. I keep looking for my copy, but I, I take it all over the house with me, so it's, it's probably somewhere downstairs. But um, we did the introduction, so please go and view the introduction. We will be in chapter one on August 15th. 9.30 a.m., August 15th, we're going to be ready for chapter one, and the panel of ladies are excited. They all have um, our areas of comments ready to go. So join us for chapter one. This coming Saturday, August the 8th, will be our regular um, monthly, JMS monthly session, so join us. And then I want to thank you for being with us this morning on our weekly prayer moment. And those are three opportunities for you to grow in your relationship with Christ in the midst of this pandemic. Being a little bit confined to our homes, our work areas, um, a little isolated, but you are still in a position to grow in God. So um, use those three vehicles, use those three opportunities to deepen your intimacy with Christ. Okay, so we're going to get started this morning. We're only going to go through verse 5, verse 1 through verse 5. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we begin this study, Father, open our hearts, open our minds. Father, allow your hope, Holy Spirit to give us understanding. We thank you being to be up, eyes open at 5.30 a.m., able to read, able to see, alive and able to speak to you, God. So we are grateful for that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, verse one. Forgive me as I sip on my coffee. The Gospel of John, chapter one, verse one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life 
was the light of men and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. Amen. So the Gospel of John, we just studied um, the epistles of John, John's letters, John 1, John 2, and 3 John. <clears throat> now we're going to go back to the Gospel of John. John, um, the beloved, the apostle of love, there's a little bit of history about him, and we went over this when we started the, God, the um, epistles of John. But his father was Zebedee, his mother was Salome. She was one of those who went to the tomb early on the morning of Jesus's resurrection. John's brother was James, and their nicknames was the Sons of Thunder. John was also a business partner in his fishing expeditions with Peter. And so this is just a little information that we know about John. The Gospel of John deals with several themes, several words that will be so foundational to understand in your walk with Christ because they are foundational terms and themes about Christ. And so one of them is <clears throat> his identity in the word, his identity of the word the identity titling Jesus Christ as the word. Life, the word life, the word light, regeneration, grace, truth, and the revelation of God the Father in Jesus the Son. In Jesus the Son. So those are some identifying themes that we're going to hear throughout the Gospel of John as we study. We may go chapter by chapter, we may not. We'll do whatever God says. It, we may move around a little bit, but for now we're gonna start in the first six verses. So, <laughs> John 20 and 31, write this down as a reference, my brothers and sisters. It tells you a lot about the entire Gospel of John. It says, John was written that we may believe that, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name, okay? When we want to think about the Gospel of John, why it was written, what is the big picture? It's found in John 20, 31. So that's a reference scripture for you. So number one, verse one. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. This word translating logos, logos, simply means something said, something said, including thought, by implication, a topic, subject of discourse, also by reasoning, a mental faculty or a motive. In John, the word, the word used in John, meaning divine expression by word, by thought, by motive, by mental faculty, spoken, divine expression, i.e. Jesus. Jesus. In the beginning was Jesus. In the beginning was the word, the logos. Then it goes on to say, and the word was with God. The word was with God. And when we see the word, you'll hear me teach it and say, Jesus was with God. The word was with God. The word was God. Jesus is another expression of God. Jesus is God. Jesus was with God. We're going to talk about that. I'm going to explain that in just a second. Verse 2, he was in the beginning with God. He was in the beginning with God. <clears throat> Genesis 
one and three, we're going to refer to it and we're going to, we're going to refer to it a couple times, gives us the idea that the word existed, it shapes our thinking around the fact that the word existed before creation, even before time. Okay, the word is no other than God himself. The word was with God. The way that this is written, not God was with the word. The word was with God. Okay, second person in the Trinity. God's always first, second person. It's like I'm one person. I have three different roles, jobs, okay? Mother, nurse, wife, okay? Show the mother, show the nurse, show the wife. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. One person, one, three individual roles, identities, one person. Okay, there's no separation of the divine trinity. Okay, Father was the creator, Jesus the savior, the Holy Spirit indwells and helps us in many ways, fills us, one person. Okay, so in the beginning, the son was with God. And let's flip over right quick and just read Genesis 1. It's beautiful. Oh, I already have it typed out here. Genesis 1, <laughs> chapter, chapter 1, first three verses. I'm going to show you something quite interesting. In the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. First person of the Trinity, God the creator. Verse 2, the earth was void. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, third person of the Trinity, was hovering over the face of the waters. Verse 3, then God said, he spoke, logos, the word, an implication of the word. We see the word is right here in scripture. And what did he say? He referred to the word as another term we're going to learn let there be light let there be light and these metaphorically we're speaking of jesus he said let there be light and there was light okay you have the trinity in the first three verses of the bible we'll come back to that the word was with god okay implying Separate personalities, one person, okay? God wasn't with the word. The word was with God. First person, second person, third person. <clears throat> and then it goes on to say, and the word was God himself. Jesus and God is one. There is no separation. <clears throat> Everything that can be said about God the Father can be said about God the Son. In Jesus dwelled all wisdom, all glory, all power, all love, holiness, justice, goodness, and truth of the Father. In him, God the Father is known. And he came down to earth to be a perfect sacrifice in the form of a man God himself couldn't step down on earth. It would probably blow up or something. Too magnificent, too bright, too awesome. But he came in the form of humanity. Divinity took on flesh. And it was the word, Jesus. He spoke himself. And here he was, the son, also the father. And that's how we know God by the son, because the son is God, okay? They are equally God, yet separate persons. 
That's what I just explained. They're equally God. <clears throat> My little crazy example, Cheryl the wife, Cheryl the nurse, Cheryl the mother are all equally Cheryl, my different persons. Nurse, mother, wife, all of them still Cheryl, if that helps you understand. Verse three, all things were made through him. It's getting good now. All things, all things were made through him, through Jesus, through the word. God spoke his expression, his mental thought took shape. And without him, nothing was made that was made. Nothing was made that was made. Another reference scripture for you, and there's tons of them, but I'm just trying to keep it short. Colossians 1, 16 through 17. Colossians 1, 16 through 17. And it reads, for by him all things were created that are in heaven, and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created through him, for him. And he is before all things. Colossians is helping us understand what was said in Genesis. The Bible will interpret itself confirm itself, never isolate scripture. And he is before all things. That's what we just read in the beginning. And in him, all things consist. All things consist. Colossians chapter one, verse 16 and 17. We also use Genesis chapter one, verses one through three. Verse four, in him was life. Whoa. So now Jesus, we know the word, the spoken expression, the mental faculty, the word, the logos, God, second person, divinity with flesh on it. In him was life. Okay. That's so, that's so deep, we don't even have time to chop it all up. In him was life. Now, what is this, this life? It is absolute life. Not just biology, bios, not just biology, okay? It was all life, okay? The word there is um, zoe, meaning even the principle of life. <clears throat> it was both essential and ethical. It was, it was the physical and the spiritual. Essential and ethical, it was absolute life, which belongs to God because he is the creator of all things. And through him was a hypostatic union. And that word simply means it combined divinity and humanity. Life, life, in him was life. And the life was the light of man. He's the word, he's life, and he is light. He is light. What's so interesting about him being light? There's dimensions to that. I don't even believe our minds can comprehend but we're going to give it our best shot. I want you to look at 1 John, which we just studied, the epistle, chapter 1, verse 5. This is the message which we have heard from him and declares to you that God is light. We're reading here that Jesus is light in chapter, in chapter 1, verse 4 of the Gospel of John. We also know that God is Jesus, second person, the word, life, light. 
the first letter, first John chapter one, verse five is reiterating the oneness by saying God is light and in him and in him, there's no darkness at all. Okay. Cause the darkness has a person up a purpose too. There's no darkness at all. Go ahead and read verse six and seven as your reference later on. That's first John chapter one, verses five through seven. Confirming this light we're speaking of in the gospel of John. So the power which creates life and maintains all else in existence is in the word. The power that creates and maintains life, all of this existence is in the word, the logos, Jesus. It is not that the word contains life and light. The word, he is life and light. That's why a relationship is so important. That's why a relationship with Jesus is so important. This, um, I was speaking with several friends of mine this week about the cliche you, you, we would hear, is this um, a good thing or a God thing? See, the world do lots of good things. That does not mean they have a relationship with Christ. But when you do good things in God, God things, okay? What's different about our walk is relationship. Don't ever confuse good. A lot of things can look good on the outside. The enemy is an angel of light, referred to as an angel of light, deceptive, good. But when you have a relationship with God, you're able to discern good in God. You're able to go into an atmosphere, discern. You're able to feel, okay, this looks good on the outside, but is this God? What's the difference? How do you know it's relationship? Relationship. The world doesn't have relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what we are building, relationship. So don't ever be confused by good. The enemy can do something good, okay? When you have relationship, you can tell the difference between good and God. So it's the relationship with life and light that we're building. It's the relationship we are building. All right, I done got way off. And the life was the light of men. The life was the light of men. The word, the life, the light of men. It's our path. It's our life. It's our heartbeat. It's how we function. It's how we get and stay out of darkness. By following the light. By loving the light. By having relationship with the light. All right? Because goodness can be found even in dark. But a relationship and life with the light will be able to tell the difference. Verse 5, and then we're going to pray. And the light here, verse 5, this light associates truth and spiritual purity. When we use the word life here, light here, I want you to associate truth and spiritual purity. This is significant because of the way verse five reads. The light shines in the darkness. Truth and spiritual purity shines in the darkness. So what's the darkness? It's the opposite of truth and spiritual purity, okay? The darkness can be lies, deception, manipulation, definitely not pure. The light shines in the darkness. Okay? 
and the darkness, meaning the absence of light, meaning the want of light, meaning the ignorance of divine things, ignorant of the truth, and associated with wickedness, not purity. And then it goes on to say, did not comprehend it. The darkness didn't even understand this light. Well, it can't. It's not supposed to. It didn't even understand it. It couldn't comprehend it. Comprehend it when you take something on as your own mentally. You lay hold of it. You got it. It's yours. Okay? You got it in your mind. The darkness couldn't even comprehend this light. The darkness was like, whoa. So Jesus, without Jesus, without the word, without life, without light, without Jesus, we are dead in the darkness. We are lost. Man has an inborn fear of both death and darkness. Why do you think that is? Because you was created by life and light. Now it's time to build a relationship with it. The light cannot lose against the darkness. One of the studies I referred to said, the darkness will never be overcome. I'm sorry. Darkness will never overcome light. This scripture says, the light shines in the darkness. Darkness will never overcome the light. The light cannot lose against the darkness. My brothers and sisters, I pray that this introduction to the Gospel of John has not only whet your appetite, but I pray it has given you a beginning glimpse because Jesus is so magnificent. He's so awesomely just wide and, and hard to grasp. But that which, with that, the part he lets us know about himself in the beginning of the Gospel of John is who he is. He's the second person of the Father. He's with the Father. He is the Father. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He is life, he is word, he is the light. He is these things. And, 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 and without him, we don't have word, life, or light. You may be alive, but it's different to be alive and have life. In the name of Jesus, I pray this devotion has blessed your heart as it has mine. You want more of Jesus? Get more word. Individuals that say, I, have, I know Jesus, I got a relationship with Jesus, but they have no word. How they work? Okay. Walking in some areas of darkness. How that work? Light does something to darkness. God's children aren't comfortable in darkness. I didn't say we won't do dark things, but you're going to run up out of darkness and start repenting in a hurry because you, you cannot live unrepentant in darkness and say, I belong to God. If you're in darkness and you say you have relationship with Jesus Christ, you cannot have peace nor be comfortable, just erratic and unsettled because that's not the place he created for you. He said, walk in the light because I am the light. So we don't get a chance to straddle the fence. We don't get comfortable dibbling and dabbling in darkness because life and light lives in us. You're filled with the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Life and light is in you right now. Let it do what it's supposed to do. 
And that is, rid us, confuse the darkness, and cause us to shine. Can't be in there together. Not saying we will not sin, not saying we won't visit dark things. You just gonna have to run up out of there and repent in a hurry to get your peace back. To get your peace back. Never live in sin unrepentant and know you wrong. No, repent in a hurry. Repent in a hurry. He is faithful to forgive us of all unrighteousness. That's also in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. That's his grace. That's his mercy. So my brothers and sisters, we got to get it right because the totality of life and light is the word of God, which is Jesus Christ. So stick with JMS because we're going to get in the word. We want all of our light and life to shine to change our lives, to heal our hearts, to cause our thinking to rise up, to change in the name of Jesus. And as we begin to pray, I, I talk about prayer paths from time to time. So what that is, is when you study a word, a devotion, let it lead you into a path of prayer. Pathways in prayer. When people say, how do I pray? If you're studying something and we have things that we do in prayer, like praise God, repent and ask and yield and speak his promises. But the word you have just studied, read, or the enemy, uh, the spirit may bring back to your remembrance becomes a pathway for you to pray and ask because his word is him. He is his will, it is life, and it is light. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you this morning for my brothers and sisters. We thank you this morning, Father, that we are up being reminded and introduced to the word, to life, to light, the second person of the Holy Trinity, being reminded of who he is, understanding God, which is confusing to the darkness, but you're giving us explanation of who Jesus is. Master, we thank you. We thank you, God. My prayer, Father, is that each of us will repent in any area of our lives. We have not allowed life and light to penetrate, to take hold of, to clean up, to make shine, to convert over. Anyway, any part of our own will, our own flesh that's denied the work of life and light, show us first of all, and Father, we repent. In the name of Jesus, we repent. Because Father, we need all of the light, all of the life that is given to us as a gift called salvation in Jesus Christ. We pray, God, many circumstances going on in this world right now is void of your life and your light. So, Master, we pray. We pray for our family members, our friends. We pray for those in our circle and sphere of influences. We pray for ourselves that anywhere darkness is attempting to take over, we already know it won't win. Life and light will never be overtaken by darkness. So Father, however you choose to invade it, you may want to use one of us. Let your will be done. And we pray for those where darkness may have taken over their minds, their hearts is some dark places, God, that our minds and hearts can go. In the name of Jesus, we pray this morning that the hand of light will reach in and grab those we're praying for, that you would grab them and pull them to yourself, God. 
pull them to yourself. Keep them master. So Father, we thank you. We ask you to continue, continue God. You be with everyone on Facebook, everybody on this prayer line. Be with them in the way that they need you the most and reveal yourself so that all the glory comes back to you. Some need healing, some need salvation, some need groceries, some need to know they're loved, some are lonely, God. Some relationships need reconciling, some relationships need refining. Most of all, God, we all need truth. Truth, spiritual purity. It's not to be denied, God, we're desperate for it because we are convinced and convicted that it is good. You are good. Your word is good. Your life is good. Light is good. Truth is good. And there's no darkness in you at all. In the name of Jesus, we pray. More of you, more of you, more of you, God. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. I thank you for being here this morning with Just For My Soul Ministries. I am Reverend Cheryl Oliver. You have an awesome day. Whether you at home, at work, or wherever, duty calls. And I want you to always remember, God is truly the lover of your soul. Bye-bye for now.